Hello. Good day to my instructor, Dr. Rene Karanza. Good day to my fellow cosmate. My name is Einstein. Today, my presentation is about problem-based learning, or in short form, it's known as PBL. So, I like to show you as much as example of problem-based learning that I use in my classroom across to teach science, biology, chemistry, or even physics. I teach from lower grade 6 up to grade 11, or sometimes grade 12. So, let us see what is basically problem-based learning. Okay. So, when we ask problem-based learning, different teachers have different ideas. Okay, it's not only teachers, it is also for the student. As you can see in the pictures, when we talk about problem-based learning, different students having different ideas. So generally, Problem-based learning is a process of acquiring new knowledge based on the recognition of a need to learn. In a problem-based learning, small groups of students are presented with contextual situation and asked to define the problem, decide why skill and resources are necessary to investigate the problem, and then provide possible solution. This is by Dutch, Croy, and Allen in 2001. So this is a definition I'm using for my presentation today. Okay, so I like to show you the example of problem-based learning that I prepared for my student and I'm using them currently. Okay, so this is an example of a normal question worksheet. So I introduced problem-based learning very little for some students. So for example, this is my first worksheet. I put only one question right at the bottom here. Okay, draw. So my question at the bottom here is the only one that is basically problem-based learning. Draw a future object, a vehicle, anything that are using the carbon nanotube graphene or fluorine and explain how the properties of this carbon are linked to the usage of the future object or the material use your imagination vividly so this is a very small introduction for the student so over here for this question they really need to think they need to find some information and they're going to use their creativity so this is for the lower grade I basically just want to introduce this concept to them. Of course, I don't really explain this is a problem-based learning to my student. I just explain this is one of the assignments. So from here, I observe whether this class is suitable or not for the problem-based learning. Or is the student ready? So this is uh, basically, I start this with about grade 8. Maybe they are about like 14 years old. Okay. Then I have... Another type, okay, so let me show you another type, problem-based learning. So again, you can see it's been prepared very long. In 2013, I started to use this, 2014. So 
Of course, this is a normal worksheet. At the end of this worksheet, uh, I have a diagram. This time I put a diagram for them. Classify the following diagram if they are strong, weak, concentrated, or dilute if. So they have to look at this diagram here. And then by looking at these pictures carefully, they should be able to identify these four types of diagram. Is it a concentrated and strong or is it concentrated and weak? Is it dilute and strong? So this is also an example of problem-based learning. So they have to see this man who's carrying basically a sword. And here you have the same man, but he's putting the sword down. So there's a different meaning. So again, I try to identify sometimes using even a picture, whether this class, whether this student is suitable for problem-based learning. So I use, I introduce very little by little for the problem-based learning. Now, then we go a little bit more. So, again, you can see most of the time in the first two questions, it is more easier. But this time, I give a bit more. This is a water and air assignment. This is a bit higher for grade 9. In the groups that you sit with your class, so over here this time, I'm going to put them in a group already. Make a poster on the following topics below. Each topic can be done by one group only. So effect of acid rain on vegetation, and then oxide of nitrogen, and so on and on. Then what is the criteria? Each group must include title of the poster, where the polythene originate, adverse effect, possible solution, diagram and pictures need to be colorful, and at least three additional resources other than your textbook that is reliable and cheated properly. I, I put that. So you can see that I'm guiding them a little bit more. And I have made some prerequisite that you need to have this and this and this. So this is problem-based learning question also. Okay, and again, you can see all these are still uh, open-ended question. It's not fixed. You can definitely give many different ideas because the idea for me is I'm just <coughs> introducing this method to learn. Now, then I want to show you a more uh, complete problem-based learning. So you can see define what is an acid. So this worksheet is guiding topic by topic itself. A student is having an excess hydrochloric acid, he visited the doctor and then the doctor gave him some medicine. So, okay, give one usage. So this is example of problem-based learning, but this is more like a typical worksheet. So again, this is more uh, suitable for the higher grade because you are basically giving them a fact of guidance. Then my last question, why does the color of the tea change when a slice of lemon is put into the cup? And I have I believe another question here about indicator, natural indicator. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, no. So sometimes I ask them, what are the natural indicator that we use in the acid and base? So these are example of my question. And this is especially for grade 10 because I really want them to be uh, fixed with some ideas because they're going to sit for the external exam. Now, and beside this, I want to show you, I also have uh, in, so this is a recent one I just give to my lower grade, but this time I use some different ways. I said, uh, this is uh, individual work. You have to use some of your ideas that you know from the, you know, all these uh, superhero character that they watch in the movies. Okay. So you'll be studying element and compound and alloy. In the class, in this task, you are required to create a superhero using your knowledge of the properties of two ionic compounds, two simple covalent compounds, and one giant covalent compound. 
you are to present your superhero as an A4 poster. A superhero must be original, cannot be the same that are already existing in the market like Iron Man or Superman. You must name your superhero. And then you must, on your poster, you need to have a draw a detailed original colored picture, label them and state which chemical they use for the, let's say for the attack or use for the defense. So over here, I'm guiding them very clearly. As well, I'm trying to incorporate what is the interest in them because problem-based learning is a self-student initiative. The students are basically taking the ownership of learning. Therefore, the design of the problem-based learning must be something that are very catchy, very interesting, so that the student can move on in this learning process even without your presence or supervision. Okay, so you can see this. I use this for example. Now, beside that, sometimes I also have other things. Let me show you another two more, then I will go back to our topic today. Okay, this is also lower grade. So I asked them why atom bonds with another atom. So give two reasons and explain. So these are usually given in before I teach this topic. So maybe they can answer, maybe they don't. It's okay with me. Now for question number two, this is quite important. Why we have friendship with others? Give three reasons and explain. So the reason that I have them to come about with three reasons is to know or is to show them at the end of the idea that probably one of the reasons is correct. So maybe another two or one reason may not be correct. Sometimes some student because they are the lower age, they might write some funny context like, ah, I want to have a friendship because I need a pizza. Oh, I'm having a friendship because I like to borrow his bicycle. You know, something like that. So all these answers are acceptable because this is not a close-ended question. I, I want them to think more openly. And then with the question number two, I would be able to move on a little bit how you can start a friendship with a new student in your school then with this question then i like to now with your answer and an explanation from question number four explain how atom can form a new bonding with another atom so it comes back to the idea just now when some students say i like to have some pizza or i like to borrow the bicycle i like to show them that in forming a bond there are ways <laughs> for example, some atom they give and some atom they receive something. So it's like pizza, you give and receive, so there's a bonding. Or sometimes there's a sharing. For example, you have a bicycle, your friend borrow your bicycle. So I want to show these are ways of atom bonding. They share something. Then reflect this unit. What is your understanding? So this is basically happened after we discussed after one or two weeks. So this is very guided uh, problem-based learning. Now, the last one for today, I want to show to you last example. Okay, so this is a normal question at the end of this. Can you create, so this is, can you, can you create a song that could enhance our learning for this chemical bonding topic? You can play any musical instrument. I also like to always to ask suggestion and improvement from the student and record them and post them in our group chat. We have our group chat like in WhatsApp, or in WeChat, you know, in other Instagram. So they like to post it about their learning. So all these are problem-based learning. So there are various examples you have seen before. And I tell you, there are various examples other teachers are using throughout the whole world, all based the idea of problem-based learning. Okay. So let us see.
what is the advantage of this problem-based learning? We can see the first of all, the learning process is driven by the student. The student are interested, the student really want to show about, for example, the superhero character, or they really make some new musical song using some of the concept. So this is driven by the student. As a teacher, we have a limited ability. The teacher may not be able to play musical instrument. The teacher may not be able to draw. The teacher may not be able to be coloring. So there are a lot of limitations. However, when we allow the student to figure out, they have many different ways or aspect that they can use to learn something. It is not necessarily that we have to teach and they have to listen. Then second, it allows students to express their ideas and opinion. So sometimes you can see at the end of my workshop, I like to ask them, what is their opinion? What is their ideas? How to improve this topic? So this is how I learn from the student and I'm trying to use their ideas to enhance the learning process. Third, it gives ownership of the learning. So instead of me chasing after them, it is them who really like to portray what they can do. It is them who like to come up front and ask me some question. It is them who like to let the learning process move. So the priority is the learning process. It's not about I'm teaching them. And the last, teachers become facilitators. So over here, as a teacher, I need to train myself to be a facilitator rather than the teaching. So that's why I need to prepare this worksheet in a way that they should be able to understand and learn. It's not too hard for them to comprehend. So what is the duty of the facilitator? So they always asked. As a facilitator or teacher, I need to identify or design an ill-structured problem or task relevant to the learners. So I need to come up with this uh, worksheet or exercises or even musical component or even drawing or even poster or even coloring that can enhance the learning for that topic. And then I present this problem to the student and I tell them this is the problem that we want to solve this problem. In this process of solving the problem, we will learn together. So it's very important for me not to teach them, but rather facilitate this process. So it's, it's going to take some time. So what's the duty of the student? Learners in their own group or sometimes even individually or even collaboratively, they generate working ideas or possible ideas. They will identify available information related to the problem, identify learning issue, identify resource to look up or even consult. They will assign tasks, okay, gather information and propose a solution. These are all the things that are basically happening in this problem-based learning. While this is happening, learning is taking place at a different level. Okay? Now, just like everything, there's always some setback and challenges in whatever method we use. So as a teacher that I'm constantly using problem-based learning and constantly trying out and experimenting it through different classes at different level, I realized there is some disadvantages and setback. First, I need to spend more time for preparation compared to the traditional teaching. Now for the traditional teaching, I just bring my PowerPoint, I just bring my textbook, I just bring some workbook and I go there for about 40 minutes, I can talk and then I can show them the PowerPoint and that's it. I'll come back home. Now in this, I need to prepare a worksheet and I need to use forward with them. And sometimes it may not work. So I have to take out the worksheet and again, readjust and make some changes so that it could be suitable for the next class. So it is basically a continuous effort. And you can see my workshop has been changing from 2013 up to 2020, almost seven years. It's not the same worksheet. It's been keep upgrading because I'm getting a lot of feedback from the student, what I need to put, what's the new thing that I need to do. So even like the musical component from one of the worksheet is from the idea of my student. He told me, why not we have some songs how we can incorporate some songs. So we did that. 
So secondly, we need students to cooperate. It only will work if the students are able to cooperate with us. If the students are not interested to learn, they don't want to cooperate, it may not really work. Now, third, I realize as I'm teaching biology, chemistry, physics, and general science, it may not work for all the topics or even subject or even at the level because there are some topics the student may not or have heard about at all. For example, let's say in chemistry, electrochemistry is a topic that if you tell them electrochemistry, they say, huh, what is that? But if you say, if you talk about, let's say, bonding, chemical bonding, yeah, it's something more acceptable. So I can use problem-based learning for this topic, but not for electrochemistry. Now, more suitable for independent learning and higher grade. This is true, especially when I try with my grade 8 and above, it is working. But I have tried with grade 6 as well. It's just that it has more limitation because the grade 6, they are very used to spin, uh, spoon fit by the teachers. So when you introduce this idea, they were a bit wack. It's like, what are you doing, sir? Why you're not teaching us? Where is your PowerPoint? But when you give this type of task for the grade, let's say grade 9 and 10, they're quite interested because they have a lot of resources. They have access to a lot of information either from the journal or website or books. So they like to come out and share their ideas. Now, again, finally, this could be suitable for small class setting only. So uh, many, many years ago, I used to teach in the school where there are about 40 students and I can't use this method because I won't be able to control. But nowadays when I'm teaching in a smaller group, about 25 or less students, I notice this way is quite good because if there are about 25 students, I'm able to divide them about to six groups. And each group I can spend about five to six minutes. So I have about, let's say, 40 minutes with groups and I have 10 minutes to introduce and another finally 10 minutes to go through with them what was expected at the end of the result. So these are some challenges that I am facing currently uh, from problem-based uh, learning. Of course, there are some other teachers who know better, who have handled better. I really like to learn from them or even any student. Okay, that's all from me for our group work problem-based learning for Framingham State University. Thank you and have a nice day. If you have any problem, please put a message to me. Thank you.